Welcome to On Texas Football Sunday uh, edition of the updates coming for the weekend. Hey, we're we're at March 17th. Spring football is right around the corner. They kick off in two days. The Texas Pro Day will be on Wednesday as well. So a lot of action coming up in this spring uh, this week for the Texas Longhorns down here in Austin. Should be very exciting. We'll have all the updates covered for you on On Texas Football and here on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, but man, man, oh man, the coming back to spring football just means we're going to be that much closer to the portal window opening up once again. And that just means uh, there's going to be more movement like we saw in the winter period as well. Not saying there's anything imminent at the moment, uh, but Texas is keeping their eyes on the defensive tackle position as we know. And as we know, going back to January, there was a lot of eyes on a pair of Michigan defensive tackles, uh, which is certainly interesting, one, because they're the defending national champions, and two, because Texas gets a crack at them week two in Ann Arbor uh, to play them in, in the big house. A, a really exciting game, and again, a lot of talent on the field, a lot of departures for Michigan last year, uh, starting with Jim Harbaugh to the L.A. Chargers, who also brought defensive line coach Mike Elston uh, to the Chargers from a year ago. So really interesting to see just what kind of movement happens with Michigan once that portal window opens up once again because you know you, we, we all know Jim Harbaugh here and you know if there's a corner to be cut or if there is a way that he can you know kind of make things easier for him and his staff and his program things are going to be uh, done in that matter and uh, he really gamed the system by uh, kind of dragging out that Chargers negotiation tactic uh, whenever he took that job to ensure that Sharon Moore did not see an exodus to the portal really brilliant stuff really making sure that the portal window and the portal market for it, for that for, for that matter really dried up and really did not have uh, the window that it would have had should Harbaugh have made the jump to the Chargers very early in the news cycle right after winning the national championship like many expected. Dragging that out really just ensured that a lot of the guys stayed on the team. For the, for the fact of the matter, I only think uh, – really two or three Michigan Wolverines have entered the portal, only one of which having real impact on the team last year. And that, uh, so really interesting stuff. April 15th is when that portal window opens up again. And again, two defensive tackles, Texas was certainly monitoring uh, in the, the January window earlier. Uh, Kenneth Graham and Mason Grant, you know, those are the two guys to really keep a close eye on Kenneth Grant. I actually uh, followed Texas and Steve Sarkeesian and Tavondre Sweat on Instagram before word getting out and hitting social media. And, you know, you got to unfollow at that point because then it just kind of gets a little interesting as a matter of fact. Uh, one more thing of note that might make things uh, a little bit trickier for these defensive linemen at Michigan is new Michigan defensive lineman uh, line coach Greg Scruggs was actually arrested uh Friday night for a, a DUI, his second DUI, uh, first since 2011. Uh, but a history there, not great for Wink Martindale's defensive uh, defensive staff at Michigan. Uh, so something to keep an eye on. Again, uh, the two Michigan defensive tackles, uh, Kenneth Grant, Mason Graham. Uh, we'll see, again, just what kind of movement happens in the portal. Texas is also monitoring UCLA and what kind of fallout they have with Chip Kelly uh, departing from the Bruins right there, uh, defensive lineman in that program, very talented, one at the top of the list for the Longhorns at the moment if he enters the portal too. So really interesting stuff. And, again, that only opens up about a month from now on April 15th. Guys can declare to enter the, tr the transfer portal now, but it won't mean anything until that portal window opens up April 15th. Uh, but as we've talked about, the movement in Austin when it comes to not only spring football coming up around, uh, but – Basketball is entering its postseason. The women's team just won the Big 12 tournament. Uh, men now all sights set on Selection Sunday today. What seed will they be? Who will they be matched up with? What bracket are they headed to? And who are the top teams there? All should be released tonight, uh, Sunday evening on the Selection Saturday or Selection Sunday uh, ESPN broadcast. So it should be really exciting times. Uh, let's go over to the dish because – it's not been the, the brightest start so far. Uh, Texas falls to Washington. Uh, at this point in 2024, you don't want to hear Washington at all. The Huskies, now your favorite or your, your least favorite animal. Uh, the, the cool, you know, purple and gold that Washington has is no longer cool. You just don't want to see Washington at all. And I think that is fair, you know, following the Sugar Bowl. And now this series against Washington at the dish. 
never see that team again, I think, uh, is what most Texas fans are, are looking at right now. But Texas now sits 10 and 8 in their 2024 campaign. And to say it's been rocky, uh, I think, would be, you know, putting it pretty lightly. You know, you, you start off pretty hot. Then you go into Houston and you get swept by LSU. You blow the game to Texas Tech. Uh, you blow another big game in which you led by eight runs to Vanderbilt. You lose the midweek to Texas A&M. Then you go to Lubbock and things start turning back around. You know, you put up a 22 spot in the opening game of that series in Lubbock. And things, you know, again, you start looking at it like, all right, we just had to get over the hump. We just had to get the conference play uh, and really settle down, settle down a little bit. You win that series in Lubbock. You win against Incarnate Word uh, in the midweek. And then now Washington comes to town and you're sitting back, you know, kind of wondering, what is the identity of this team? You just don't know at the moment. You thought Porter Brown would be the face of this team. He's had a slow, kind of sluggish start so far. The pitching, especially in the back half of the bullpen, has not been great. You lose uh, 9-3 to three and 5-3. to three. Now you're starting to wonder about the offense again. It's kind of, again, it's not been great. And I, I have to wonder, you know, what – depth are you sitting there on that texas lineup thinking yeah i feel good about these guys uh it, it, it hasn't been great for david pierce's squad and there's been a lot of unfortunate you know uh moments for this team so far so at 10 and 3 texas gets air force for a, a, a pair of midweek games coming up and luckily this year you don't have to face paul Skeens throwing 102 at you like we saw a couple of years ago when air force came to town but Big series against Baylor uh, next weekend, starting March 22nd through the 24th. It should be a series in which the Longhorns take that series. And by all means, it would be huge for them to sweep that series and really get things back in the right direction. Because, again, if you don't win this afternoon against Washington and you go into uh, a, a bit of a losing skid, that thing can really start sliding quickly, especially with a pair of midweek games here. Um <clears throat> Not what you want to do with the heart of the Big 12 coming right up uh, here to get going. So Texas got to figure it out there. You know, that baseball team is, you know, probably one of the only teams right now that's kind of slowing, I guess, the trajectory of the Texas Longhorns when it comes to returning to the Director's Cup championship circle. So uh, it, it's got to carry the load there. Really interesting. Uh, but I wanted to get to spring football because, hey, like we said, only two days away from the start of spring football. And on top of that, we're going to begin with the NFL Pro Day because uh, the, or the Texas Pro Day, because I don't think a lot of people are, are giving it its due at the moment. Uh, of course, 11 Longhorns should be participating uh, more if you consider Quinn Ewers. Uh, Jet Bush will be in there as well as as will Ryan Sanborn, uh, who will be punting and kicking uh, in front of NFL scouts. But Biggest question, who of the wide receivers receivers will be running? I do not think you will see Xavier Worthy running routes. Uh, he ran his 4-2-1 at the combine. He kind of checked the one. I don't even want to say if it's a question mark or not, uh, but he did go out there and he set the combine record for the 40-yard dash. No real need right now to go out there and run again or participate in the drills for the Longhorns uh, this Wednesday. Uh, he will be there. He will be supporting his, his teammates as well, but I wanted to get to who this day is really for, and that's for guys who did not have great combines, did not have senior bowl invites, or did not participate in them. It's for a guy like Jordan Whittington, you know, to get in front of these NFL executives and scouts one last time and really get the idea of uh, putting on one more time for an audition to the NFL. That's what this uh, this Wednesday will be for Jordan Whittington. Again, he was invited to the Barista Senior Bowl. He did not participate due to a, a pulled hammy, uh, a lingering issue that affected him during the combine as well. He only was able to bench, and he did bench very well. 18 reps was tied for fifth most of the wide receivers in the 2024 combine, but that's not the real question with Jordan Whittington. We know he can be physical. We know that he can block. The tape sh shows that he is a willing and a, a, a guy that, embraces contact whenever he's in the blocking game. What can he do in the passing game is really where he's going to make his money. And right now, not being able to run routes, not being able to show off his hands, not being able to do tests and drills and measurements uh, and the agility side of things, not great for his stock right now, uh, who is kind of sitting right on that outside of the draft looking in. Uh, for a guy like Keelan Robinson, 
this is another opportunity to go run 4-4, maybe an opportunity to run 4-3, and that would really start looking into uh, a potential to get drafted for Keelan Robinson. As Rod has been mentioning, mentioning uh, the change in NFL kickoff rules could really impact how teams approach special teamers uh, moving forward. And a guy like Keelan Robinson in a world where kickoffs are now – I guess more open to uh, big returns. Keelan Robinson's stock is going up right now. Of course, I do think Jordan Winnington and Keelan Robinson, I think all of these Texas Longhorns will find homes. Will it be in the draft? That is the big question mark. And again, the Texas Pro Day is here for that reason to kind of look at it and say, all right, now we know uh, where these guys are officially going to fall. About a month from now, April 27th, April 24th, kind of in that range is when the NFL draft will kick off. Above anyone else, this is a huge weekend uh, for Jalen Ford. And I think, you know, Jalen Ford is a guy who you talk to him, you sit down and you say, all right, show me what's diagnose what's going on on this tape. He's going to give you everything that he's got. And it's going to be exactly what you want to hear from an NFL side of things. He's got the brain on him. He's got the tape. The play diagnosis is there. But the speed measurables are exactly where NFL teams are kind of sitting back and saying, you know what, we've seen the production over the last two years, but because we don't have our, our verified testing times, that speed is kind of going to be that big question mark. And again, the NFL Pro Day for the Longhorns is going to be uh, really, really important for them to boost their stock. We saw DeMarvion Overshone go in the third round. I thought Jalen Ford was probably a little bit more productive as a linebacker, but in the NFL where we see that hybrid mix of safeties to linebackers kind of taking over that middle of the defense, that speed and agility is really what helped uh, DeMarvion Overshone go day three. Right now, I think Jalen Ford kind of falls into that uh, – or sorry, DeMarvion Overshone went day two. I think Jalen Ford right now is in that day three range. Uh, but, again, testing can certainly help his case. Another interesting storyline to, to follow at the Texas Pro Days, Quinn Ewers is throwing for the wide receivers and defensive backs that will be in attendance. Hey, why not? If you think every NFL scout there won't be looking at Quinn Ewers, you would be wrong. This is another great opportunity ahead of time to get a little uh, a little bit of eyes on what Quinn Ewers can be this upcoming season. It should be really interesting, again, to see how he throws in front of these NFL scouts because, uh, uh, you know, we heard Rod talk about it. The minute you go out there for a combine setting or a pro day setting, things change. You know, it's it's just you out there. You're no longer with your brothers, uh, 10 other guys on defense with you at cornerback. You had a safety over the top. You had help on the inside. Right now, when you're running your 40, when you're doing your DB drills, it is just you and every pair of eyes in the building uh, watching you uh, do, uh, work your craft. So going to be interesting. Again, Quinn Ewers throwing for the Texas Pro Day, uh, expected to go in the first round next year, is right now tied for uh, the, the the favorite for the Heisman with Carson Beck at just over 7-1. So, again, big opportunity for Quinn Ewers to kind of sit back and say, all right, yeah, Y'all have your draft now because this upcoming year is going to be all me. Uh, that will be Wednesday. It will be live. Uh, or it won't be live broadcasted, but it will be televised on LHN uh, 7 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time afterwards. Uh, but hey, it, it really, really interesting time. And it's going to be very fun for the Texas Longhorns in the NFL draft. We haven't had eight, nine guys potentially getting drafted in quite a while. So especially in the top half of the draft. It's going to be uh, exciting times moving forward, and this should just be the standard that we see with the Texas Longhorns moving forward under Steve Sarkeesian, uh, a, a very uh, plent bountiful, plenty of talent, whatever the words are, uh, for the Longhorns entering the NFL. But that is all coming on Wednesday. One other thing to look forward to this week is the winning drive kicking off Mondays uh, afternoon, really exciting time. Me, Rod Babers, and Coach Shipley getting together. A little afternoon show talking spring football, Texas football, the NFL draft, uh, philosophies of football. Uh, it, it is a real combination of intellect and talent that we have uh, that will be joining us on Monday afternoon. So stick around. Make sure to like it and subscribe it and do all the good stuff. Uh, for now, Sunday Fun Day concludes. Find us over at ontexasfootball.com. Of course, big game for the Texas Longhorns baseball team this afternoon as well. And the Texas spring game and pro day kicking off this weekend, Tuesday and Wednesday, respectively. Uh, but for now, that will do for Sunday Fun Day. I'm CJ Vogel and hook them.